Hey guys, um, I watched a movie last night and I want to talk about that just a little bit. The movie that I saw was called The China Syndrome and it's from 1979. It's got uh, Jane Fonda, Jack Lemmon, and Michael Douglas. I downloaded this movie on purpose because I was kind of interested in um, the whole nuclear meltdown thing and I was watching actually like a list of like the most famous man-made disasters on YouTube. Uh, it was, I think it was like a top 10 list or something like that. It was pretty interesting actually like what they were. Um, and a couple of them were nuclear disasters. They mentioned the Three Mile Island incident, which I think happened in, I want to say Pennsylvania, I may be wrong on that. Uh, it was before my time. And also the Chernobyl disaster, which happened when I was a kid technically, but uh, I don't really remember that happening. Like I was way too young to be like following the news or anything like that. But I do have friends um, that were living in Europe at the time and they talked to me about um, you know having to take I forget what kind of pills it was I think it was like iodine pills or something like that to sort of counteract the nuclear activity that was all over the you know atmosphere it traveled all over Europe to like different countries and, and that sort of thing what I do remember though very recently is the uh, Japanese um, the Fukushima nuclear disaster that occurred um, from the earthquakes and the tsunamis over there in Japan, there was like a series of meltdowns, and uh, you know that's uh, we were concerned about the nuclear waste like traveling across the ocean currents and sort of arriving in British Columbia along the coast. And I, I I don't know if they ever did detect like low level nuclear you know readings or whatever, but uh, it was definitely a concern that's for sure. Um, and I think it should be a concern for everyone. Um, okay, so about the movie like um, it was a good movie actually like if you've never seen it I definitely recommend it I am partial to older movies because I think new movies um, you know it's all like Die Hard 6 and all this stuff with uh, you know things blowing up and you know just no story at all it's just a series of uh, you know spectacular violent events one after another uh, for like a, a increasingly desensitized audience who has no patience for stories anymore all, all we want is special effects, we want to hear which movie made the 100 million, 200 million. If it, like movies now, if they've got budgets of like 100 million, 200 million, if they don't make double that, it's like a failure. And um, I don't know, I, I don't, that's why I never go to the movies anymore. And I, I don't really watch that many movies at all. In fact, I recall watching um, The Expendables, I think it's called, uh, on a bus in Mexico. And that was such a horrible movie. <clears throat> like, it had no story that I could ascertain whatsoever. It was basically just how many like violent acts can you cram into like one movie, and just every minute, every two minutes, it, like somebody's beating somebody up, somebody's shooting someone. It's just I don't know. Anyways, uh, it's not a review of, of that movie. Uh, so what did I think about the movie? It was it was really good actually. Like um, the, basically the story for those of you who don't know, and you can probably find it in two seconds on IMDb. It's about like a news reporting team. They go to a nuclear power plant and they're doing like sort of like a routine story. I guess at that time nuclear power was like more of a cutting edge thing. And so they were just, you know, detailing what was going on in the plant, like uh, processes or whatever for like a news special. While they were there, uh, they were up in some like, you know, restricted area and they could see down into the control room. And the, the guys down there started going nuts and all these alarms started going off. And, uh, you know, after a few minutes or whatever, um, they kind of resolve the problem and everybody starts like celebrating so happy and all this um, and then they're told like the news people are told like oh it's no big deal it was just like you know a small glitch or whatever but based on the reactions of the people involved they thought it was like a much larger thing and um, <clears throat> the camera guy uh, Michael Douglas he was like filming the incident and so they got this film later to like their news editors and stuff the guys would not allow them to, to air it because they were afraid they were gonna get sued and news got, you know, somehow the nuclear guys found out that the, the, they had filmed the incident. So there was like this huge cover up and like the nuclear guys were planning on building more of these plants. And, um, you know, they, there was like billions and billions of dollars on the line. So they wanted to cover up the incident and just, you know, nuclear power is safe, you know, nothing to worry about um, and all this sort of thing. So. Um, basically, uh, Jack Lemmon, who's one of the like head scientists at the plant, he sort of like slowly but surely kind of like turns against the nuclear guys because he realizes they're trying to cover everything up, and so he kind of like goes to the media and they try to like make a report, 
uh, it doesn't really work out, um, you know, then he, uh, Jack Lemmon, like, takes over the nuclear power plant, he, like, shuts himself in the control room, and he's got, like, a gun, and he's gonna, you know, he says he's gonna, like, flood the, um, flood the re reactor or something like that if, if they don't uh, put him on the air right now so he can, like, tell everything about, uh, you know, what an unsafe nuclear plant this is, and, uh, you know, inevitably he gets, uh, like, gunned down by the, uh, by the, like, special ops team that comes in, like, the SWAT team that comes in to stop him. <clears throat> so, that's kind of the, uh, the end of the movie, is him getting shot, and, um, but, I mean, his story gets told. People kind of find out that the nuclear plant is unsafe, and, you know, what a violation of trust, right? So, the issues that came up, uh, for me from this movie are nuclear power safety. Um, I did a bit of research, actually, this morning, and I found out that, um, Canada has 19 nuclear reactors, um, none of which are in British Columbia, I'm very happy to report. So, I'm actually not within range of a nuclear plant. Uh, that's pretty sweet, I think, after watching that movie, I'm, I'm certainly happy to hear that. Um, I believe our power here gets supplied by, like, hydroelectric dams, which uh, everybody kind of protests um, when they're being built because, oh, it's going to affect the nature and the life uh, of the fish, and uh, I don't know all the arguments, okay, but like I do know that every time they talk about building a new hydroelectric dam in BC, people like basically freak out. Um, it's funny, they, sh they should watch this movie, uh, you know, they should go talk to the people in Japan, in Fukushima, where like there was a huge nuclear meltdown, and um, you know, thousands of people died. <clears throat> I think uh, cutting off, uh, you know, stifling a few rivers, like way up north in the province or something like that, yeah, it could cause a little bit of environmental damage, but not as much as a nuclear meltdown, that's for sure. Um, so, um, <clears throat> in the United States, there's 103 nuclear reactors. And the next biggest country is France with 58, and Russia has 33. China only has 18. But um, it's, it's kind of funny, you can see that construction numbers of nuclear plants are really dwindling in recent years. I'm assuming that they have been made unpopular by, you know, large-scale events like Chernobyl and Fukushima most recently. But it's interesting because um, China has 28 nuclear reactors under construction. So they have 18 and they're constructing 28. And I'm not like a, you know, a history not about China or anything like that, but I do know that some of the largest disasters in human history have occurred in China. They've been extremely large-scale earthquakes that have killed, like, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, I don't know, like I said, I don't know all the history, but I know that China has had, like, tons of earthquakes. So, if you look at Japan, I think it was the earthquake that caused the nuclear meltdown. Um, so, I don't think that's a wise decision by China, but they've got, like, a billion people who have increasing energy needs because their standard of living is going up. So, <clears throat> I don't know, it's just, uh, it's one of those things that, uh, that's, that's an accident waiting to happen, if you ask me. Um, so also, like, another issue that the movie brought up was energy demand and government policy about that. And if you look at governments, uh, like, specifically the U.S. government, because they're the easiest target, I suppose, um, you know, a lot of their policy, their foreign policy, is based around, like, energy needs. Uh, the population uses an insane amount of energy. If you, if you look at, like, a per capita energy use, water use, etc., Countries like Canada and the United States, uh, I'm sorry to say Canada, but it's true. Um, we use like so much energy compared to the rest of the world. I wish I had looked up those stats before this, but if you compared us to like Europe or India or even like China or something like that, the per capita uh, energy use would go down, down, down because those people aren't driving as much, you know, maybe, they, maybe in developing countries they don't have computers and TVs and all that stuff. Um, so anyways, we just use like a huge, huge, unsustainable amount of energy in, in our countries. Um, <clears throat> and also the government is forced to take some really kind of sketchy decisions in order to um, supply energy to the population. It's like uh, the whole, and we're not even talking about oil right now, right? That's kind of a different topic, but um, you know, they, they attack other countries, they sort of generate wars. Uh, I'm not going to say that like, you know, the, uh, like, I know for the Iraq war, um, you know, like, they said that there was those uh, weapons of mass destruction, <clears throat> and they didn't find anything, you know? I remember reading a speech by Colin Powell um, when I was in university. Uh, it was like a rhetoric course or something like that, so sort of talking about, like, how people convince other people of things. 
and uh, he had this speech to, I think it was the UN Council or something like that, about the weapons of mass destruction. And later on, like, he basically admitted that that speech, like, ruined his career, because um, he just lied about everything in it. Um, so, but anyways, I, like, the whole point of that war, in the end, is just to, you know, secure the oil reserves over there, I'm assuming. Um, and lots of people have very strong opinions about that. I'm not, like, <clears throat> I'm not American, for one thing, but I don't like wars, and uh, I don't like our addiction to oil, so that's that. Um... Government cover-ups, that's another topic that was pretty big in the movie. Um, and I know that Americans are much bigger into this than we are in Canada, but uh, that doesn't mean our government's completely honest either. Um, you know, every, every country has its share of sort of cover-ups by the government. Um, I don't know what the deal is with that. Honestly, like, I'm not, like, a conspiracy guy. I don't think, like, 9-11 was an inside job. Um, who knows, maybe it was. I don't, you know, that's not for me to say. But uh, there's a lot of people out there who really distrust governments, especially, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, people uh, who come from communist countries. Like I have friends that come from like Eastern Europe, and they're extremely um, skeptical and uh, just distrustful of like authorities and governments in general. Anybody who's lived in a country with a lot of corruption, I would say, um, is definitely distrustful of their governments. And you know, United States, Canada, okay, we're like the freest countries in the world, blah, blah, blah. But uh, people still distrust their governments. I bet you, like, 50% of people in the United States, like, you know, just think their government's up to all sorts of crazy stuff. And when you hear things like the PRISM scandal and, uh, you know, other things like that, it really makes you think, uh, like, what are these guys up to? Are, are, they, are they to be trusted? Or is it just a rigged game? Like, is there any point to voting whatsoever? Who knows? Um, the last thing uh, from the movie that I thought was important was the media's role. Um, and lots of people kind of bag on the media as being like unobjective and like biased towards a certain political group or others. Like I've heard all sorts of things about like Fox News in the States. I, I don't watch, I don't even have a TV these days, so I don't really watch the news. I kind of just read it all online. But, um, you know, in Toronto too, there's this, uh, the mayor there, Rob Ford, like he's always accusing a certain newspaper. Um, he's conservative, I guess, and... He's always confusing, or sorry, accusing um, the Toronto Star, which is a liberal paper. He's always saying they're out to get him, and you know he's ranting and raving in front of them, and he won't even talk to that newspaper anymore. So oh, people are always accusing the media of biases, but I think the truth is that the media does us a great service. There's a lot of things we would not know about, a lot of important events we would have no clue that are happening if not for the media. So in this in this movie, um, it's about like a media team that sort of goes the extra mile, like they really put themselves at risk to get this story out there in front of the public. So, you know, the media should be commended for the job they do. It's not easy. Sometimes reporters who are over in like, you know, war-torn countries and stuff, they get killed, they get kidnapped, you know. So it's, it's a dangerous job and uh, we should thank them for the service they do us all. Hey, uh, I did a bit of research uh, after watching the movie. Um, and I found this cool website uh, called nuclearsafety.gc.ca um, and it's about, uh, it's all these myths and facts about nuclear power. And there's one in particular that I would like to, to talk about. Um, okay, so here's the myth. It says, there's no way to calculate the odds of an accident occurring at a nuclear power plant and what the consequence, consequences would be. Okay, so that's the myth and here's the fact. The nuclear sector uses a powerful tool called Probabilistic Safety Assessment, PSA to assess the consequences and likelihood of different types of accidents, whether they are initiated by external events, like earthquakes or floods, internal events, such as system malfunctions or human error. In conducting such assessment, specialists consider all potential accident sequences and look at the performance of the safety systems that need to operate to prevent reactor damage. Specialists also assess the measures in place to limit the consequences of any reactor damage. PSA results are valuable because they confirm the safety of facilities designs and identify potential areas for improvements. Um, okay, well, um, that's reassuring, I guess, but uh, if that was the case, then there would never be any nuclear accidents, right? Um, if they're really anticipating everything, if the systems are so well designed, yet we have two extremely large-scale um, disasters that have happened in the last... 25 years, let's call it, um, which resulted in, you know, huge loss of life and also just, you know, lots of cancer and disease in those countries where they occurred. 
Um, if you look at a map of um, where the nuclear power plants are in the United States, um, they're kind of all over the place, honestly, but I noticed that there's kind of a trend. Um, there are, the closest one to me is in Washington State, I guess. It's called Columbia. Uh, the, it looks like there's two in California, which I think is a, kind of crazy because there's, that's obviously a huge earthquake zone. There could be a large scale disaster happen there for sure. Uh, and there's huge population centers there uh, as well. Uh, but if you look at the East Coast, basically anywhere east of like, I guess Kansas and Texas, there's like a ton of nuclear power plants. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but uh, you know, there's less earthquakes out there for sure. Uh, but there's a lot on the East Coast there, and uh, the East Coast gets hammered by some pretty serious hurricanes, including Florida. They've got, it looks like, three or four um, on the map as well. If these guys really knew what they were doing, I don't think they would be building nuclear power plants in locations where earthquakes or tsunamis were possible. Like, I think that uh, that <clears throat> the energy demands of, uh, of the United States and of the world in general right now are just insane. Like, they're unsustainable. And now we, you know, what we did, you know, 30 or 40 years ago or whenever they started making these plants is we thought we had the, um, you know, the, the silver bullet or whatever to the energy problem. Uh, no more building or burning coal and having, you know, London shrouded in darkness and people with handkerchiefs over their face dying of, like, uh, respiratory problems. So, <clears throat> a long time ago, they realized the, um, the need to have sort of a, an energy that was clean, clean energy, I guess, let's call it. Uh, so they went the nuclear route, um, and that seems, in theory, like a really cool thing, but, I mean, there's some disturbing questions, like, what do you do when it melts down? Like, it basically, uh, you know... It has like a mushroom cloud, you know, it's like a nuclear bomb kind of thing. Apparently it's not the same thing, like that's another myth that's on this page, is it's, it's truly not like a nuclear bomb for various reasons, but the fact is that it causes loss of life on a large scale and puts a lot of pollution into the atmosphere on a large scale. Um, so, I don't know, it's like what's the solution to the energy crisis? I wish I knew, uh, but the only thing I can think of, the only solution really, is to make our lives more efficient in terms of energy and use less energy. Um, we're not going to be able to find more um, more power sources on Earth. Like maybe the <clears throat> the renewables like sun and wind and all that stuff is a possibility, but it seems to cost a lot more to do it, and uh, it's way less efficient efficient than burning like fossil fuels or something like that. Uh, which is probably why people have been so slow to adopt um, renewable resources. Um, I don't know, the, the whole energy crisis is sort of a different topic and I wish I had the solution to it. My only solution is just to, to lower my use of energy. Like, I, I cycle to work, um, you know, I've got energy efficient devices in the home, I, I don't keep lights on when I don't need them, I don't have a TV that I'm watching like all day or anything. Um, you know, so just try to limit your use of energy, I think that would help a lot. You know, and same thing with water, it's like to turn off the faucet when you're brushing your teeth. Uh, I've been guilty of this too, like I'm not, I'm not perfect for sure. Um, but you know, things like that, just stop wasting energy and wasting water and resources and things like that. And if we, if we stop that, I think that we would have less need to be constructing nuclear plants and all this kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, the movie was really good, I definitely recommend it. Um, you know, it's an older movie and you know what's interesting is there was actually like a nuclear, a partial nuclear meltdown the same year that this movie came out. So I guess it was credited as being sort of uh, prolific um, in, in its uh, storytelling, I guess. So um, recommend the movie for sure. Um, and also just to think about like your lives. I bet a lot of you live within range of a nuclear power plant. So I'm not saying you should all get up and run away or something, but uh, definitely be aware of it and tailor your preparations in that direction if that's something you're concerned about. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.